So as usual, welcome in everybody to my painting tutorial. I'm Erin, same Erin from wherever you found me, YouTube, Facebook, whatnot. It's still me, just in a different space. Uh, hello. Uh, as usual, I'll be teaching you a painting step by step today. Uh, it's this lovely spooky painting here. I'm still doing the thing where I don't name it and I'd love you all to name it. Um, despite not uploading to YouTube for a quick couple weeks here, um, <laughs> I'm going to be uploading again very soon. I'm just a little behind, honestly. Um, so keep naming the paintings because I still want titles for when I upload these to YouTube eventually. So feel free to suggest some names and I'll take one uh, for later. Uh, but yeah, for those who are brand new, uh, what happens is I'll be displaying this just for the next minute or two. So if you want a quick little screenshot, please go ahead and take that now uh, because I will eventually be replacing it with a blank canvas here. And I'll be painting on the blank canvas and I'll be showing you step by step how I created this painting. Okay, so take your screenshots. Uh, this photo is also on Instagram, just in a cropped square version. It's also on Facebook in the Facebook event banner if you want a digital version as well. Uh, what else here? In terms of supplies, I'll go through those as well. I use all colors. Yes, I use red, I use yellow, I use phthalo blue, black, and white. And then I have my usual three brushes. It's the same as always. I have a large flat brush, a medium round brush, and a small round brush. And I always say that any combination is fine. Maybe you have slightly different brushes here and there. That's fine. Thanks. And yeah, the supplies are right there. My Instagram's right there in chat if you need to click anything or like read it out. Thank you very much, Wookie and Gray. Um, yeah, otherwise supplies include a cup of water. I've got an apron. Thank you, Terry, as always for that. Uh, my plate, my volcano plate is still here. It's just resting because it is so, so heavy again. Yep, still, still, still uh, gaining weight, <laughs> still gaining height. Uh, and that's about it. A canvas or a piece of paper, whatever you're painting on. And uh, that's really all. Cool. Okay, that starts us off. So again, one last chance, take a quick little screenshot if you want a digital version or something to look at. Otherwise, Instagram has it, Facebook has it in the event there. Event banner. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna switch it. And I'll bring it back up and down. It just won't be, uh, just won't be stationary for you to see. So that was my warning. There we go. All right, let's begin. So we're going to start with a nice, super, super big brush. It's not super, super big. There are definitely bigger, but this is my biggest brush, the large flat brush. And the first thing I always do is just dip it in my water to begin with. It's always a little bit easier to use a wet brush I find with acrylic paint, so you can dip it in your water. And I'm going to start by making a nice bright, uh, kind of dark, but vibrant purple. So once again, as a reminder, this was my purple in the background. You can see it's nice and dark, but still pretty vibrant. Um, so I'll be using phthalo blue and red mixed together. I would say I use maybe a little extra red. I find that makes the purple a little more vibrant. Like I said, it's still kind of bright despite it being dark. I know that's kind of contradicting, but you know what I mean? It's like a nice royal purple. So we got blue. And then I would mix some red in there. I would mix more red than blue. In the end, you can make whatever shade of purple you like. That's always most important with uh, these painting tutorials that I do. I always encourage you to do whatever you want. So even if it's a completely different color, please do that. But in the end, um, I can help you get as close as, uh, close as, as close as we can to my original. But don't worry if things are just a little bit off or look a little bit different. As long as you like it, that's most important. So mix a lot of the purple, by the way. Lots of purple, because we're going to cover the entire thing with purple to start. The whole thing. Blank canvas, spooky, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm scared. <laughs> Scary canvas. All right, let's see how this is looking. And sometimes it's good to uh, put it on the canvas to see what the color is like. Sometimes the color might look a little dark on your plate or just a little bit different once it hits the white it'll look a little bit different. So again, try, and then you can remix if you need to. This is about right in my opinion. Or again, it's something I like. It's a purple I like, so I'm gonna start applying it. Edge, hello! How are you? Wish you a great day. Oh, thank you, Edge. I'm great, thanks. We're just starting a little acrylic painting tutorial. Welcome in. Feel free to hang out even if you're not painting along. There's lots here who are just hanging out, having a good time watching and chatting. But hope your day's well too. <laughs> White hype. <laughs> 
So you can really apply this however you want. I'm sticking to my usual left and right, back and forth. If you want to do up and down, go diagonal, crazy, crazy. Do a little face and then cover it up, whatever you like. You can do any of that. Have fun with it. We're just going to cover it all up anyway, right? All right, still mixing purple. And of course, because we're covering the whole background, you can go around the edges as well. I always recommend that. Going along the sides, along the top, just to kind of complete the whole painting, the purple will be going everywhere. So you can do that on every single edge if you'd like. Oh, I need inspiration. Ooh, okay. You want some spooky inspiration? I got it right here. I need inspiration too, Edge. I need some inspiration for um, later this week. Um, I haven't released a schedule on Facebook yet, but I will. I was kind of hoping to get a uh, tutorial painting ready before I did that. That's why it's missing right now. But I'm planning. I want to do a tutorial on Friday night. I think Saturday, Halloween day. I think a lot of people are going to be busy with things, so I didn't want to do a tutorial that exact day. However, I think Friday is a nice, like, maybe Friday just early evening or something. Maybe 7 or something like that. Oh no, I, I think I chose 8 already. Whatever. Friday evening, I want to do a tutorial. Sorry, I'm getting all mixed up here. So look out for that. I don't have a design ready, but as I said, I need some inspo, so if anyone has ideas, let me know. Would you ever use a black canvas at any point in your tutorials? Um, maybe if your painting kind of calls for it. Hold on one sec. I'm just gonna hit this corner. There we go. Um, yeah, I would definitely consider it, Lil Sis. I would probably choose it for a design a little further planned out just so people can have time to go get either a black canvas or paint theirs black. But why not, yeah. I've done a few kind of darker paintings. I don't think I've ever done one with a full black background. Some were close for night skies, but not quite, but I would definitely consider it. Cindy, welcome in, how's it going? Nice having you in another chat. How was your game, by the way? You said you were trying your new game. <laughs> Lakeside, welcome in, just watching today. Okay, sounds good. Hope everything's good with you guys at home. Still need to, uh, and some of my paintings, but inspiration is always something I need. Okay. I've got a few of those too, Edge, right now. I've got some uh, half completed paintings, semi completed paintings. But yeah, inspiration for Friday. If anyone has any ideas for like a really, really Halloween y painting, I think this one is super Halloween as well. Um, I was kind of bouncing around ideas of doing like a big cauldron with like a witch kind of over top of it, you know, ooh, doing some stuff. If everyone, uh, if anyone thinks that would be fun and interesting, let me know. Or if you have any other Halloweeny ideas that I haven't done yet, let me know. I would love to create one. Da -da -da -da. Hello, hello. Are black canvases more expensive? I honestly don't know because I don't think I've ever purchased one, little sis. If they are more expensive, I would probably guess just slightly. Just slightly. Because I would imagine it's about the same cost for the for the uh, producer to... Um, producer, whatever. <laughs> uh, the factory, whoever makes canvases. For them to put on like a white gesso layer versus a black layer, I feel like it would be about the same. D oh, Danny, Danny, hello. We're doing a tutorial. Welcome in. We're doing this uh, lovely painting here. How's it going with you? It's been a little since we've caught up. Da -da 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 -da. Pumpkin carving painting. Oh, maybe. I, I'm actually doing legitimate pumpkin carving on Saturday, Emma. So on Saturday too, I am still streaming. I'm just not doing a tutorial. So if you want to see me on Saturday, I still will be on Saturday on Halloween, kind of uh, more in the morning, mid afternoon. And I'll be doing different kinds of activities. I might be painting a pumpkin. I want to do that. I'm, I'll be carving something and I think I'll be dressed up. I don't know as what yet, but I want to be dressed up and spooky. 
despite not going out, I still want to get uh, get a costume going. So you can tune in for that if you're interested. Posted in spell. Oh, thanks, little sis. Perfect. There's one painting that I want to, and only one face left. Scared of painting face. Oh, okay. I'm the same. <laughs> I'm in the middle of doing a face portrait thing right now, and uh, it's scary. Yes. Lori, welcome in. How's it going? I forget if you said you were making time for this one or not. Um, are you painting along today? Hope your extra shift went well this week. You were busy busy when you popped in last. Oh my goodness. Michael's black are the same. Oh perfect. Thank you Nancy. Need to honor Mr. Spider. Oh, you're right canine. I need to make a spider painting. You're right. I'll put him in somewhere. Whatever I choose. Failing is okay, art takes practice. I agree, Smash, I agree. Nobody starts out just like absolutely perfect. Paint a fox pumpkin. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Thanks, Lori, I'll check it out. A fox pumpkin, oh. Yay, tutorials are awesome, doing good. I'm glad you're doing good, Danny. Yeah, I know it's been a minute since I've popped in your stream or seen you. Maybe you'll be at uh, Joe's Halloween stream. Are you going to do anything for that too, for Halloween? Maybe something with your kitties? I'm not sure. <laughs> Mom and or dad. <laughs> okay, my canvas is finally covered. I'm going to give it a minute or two. We don't need it to completely dry before we go ahead, actually. So this will be fine. So don't worry about it completely drying. Uh, what I do next is I do the uh, the house and you can see the uh, spooky haunted house uh, has a nice black background and black's going to go right on top of purple, even if it's a little wet. So we don't need to worry too much right now. Just because I like how it already looks. Ah, I see. Again, I can totally understand that. You're like, oh, it's looking good though, but it needs more detail, but it might like kind of wreck it. But just go for it. Just go for it. You can always go on top, right? You can always try again. Ooh, they like your pumpkin, Lori. Black cats and a cauldron. Yeah, that could be good. I, I have this vision of like a big cauldron here and then like a witch on top. There could be a black hat somewhere. That would be very cool. Depends on what I'm doing with my kiddos. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Black cats with witch hats. Oh, it'd be cute. Oh, the pumpkin was your canvas. Oh, cool. That's exactly what I want to do on Saturday, Lori. Just like paint a pumpkin or pour on a pumpkin. I might do a paint pour on a pumpkin. I need to research it more, but I'm doing something paint related on a pumpkin. Minty Grandma, welcome in. Thanks to the follow. Kind of recognize you. I'm not sure if you followed before, but welcome in. Might do a pre-Halloween stream on, on Tuesday in costume. Oh, cool. Okay, okay. I'll look for that then. Hope I can make it. Your beach scene, I can feel the breeze. Ooh, lots of beautiful art being shared. Lovely. Moose, welcome in. I'm feeling you're going to be uh, resilient to geese in the picture. Oh, maybe. <laughs> we already got some ghosties in the picture coming up, so no geese. But welcome in. Hello. No batteries today for you to monitor because I'm on the one camera today. So sorry. Wish I could have found spooky music. I'll make sure I get that ready for... Uh coming up to Halloween. This is pretty relaxing music. Need some spooks. So next uh, next step, everybody, is going to be using black paint. Um, I'll try and make clear here. I'm not gonna use black paint because I want you guys to see the shape a little bit better, what I'm doing. If I use black on top of purple, it's gonna be a little bit hard for you guys to see. So I'll say it again before I start the step, but you'll use black paint. I'm gonna use like a gray or something like that just so you can really see the shape of everything. Da -da. Trina, thank you for the follow as well and welcome in. Want to do the melted crayons on a white pumpkin and my nephews. With my nephews, I couldn't find a white pumpkin. Okay. Right! I've seen that on canvases. I've never seen that on a pumpkin. That sounds so creative! Lori, maybe I could do that. Oh boy. I could like pre-paint the pumpkin white. That would be very interesting. I kind of want to just do a pour though. I saw people doing like just like paint pouring but on a pumpkin and then all the ripples kind of, you know, came down. Dripped down. It was so neat. Yeah, it sounds cool though, Lori. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I want to get something a little more defined for Saturday, Danny. I'm sure I'll post that very soon, just in case people want to tune in for certain aspects of it. But yes, that's uh, part of the plan. Didn't even know white pumpkins were a thing till I saw some in a field this year. Yeah, they're they're like a s aesthetic pumpkins. They're like... <laughs> uh, I've seen them in people's homes just to kind of brighten up the space a little bit more with the orange ones and like gourds and things like that. They're very variety aesthetic, yes. Take time to stop in. Cool, sounds good, Danny. Yeah, I have a lot I have a lot coming up. I'll tell you about this week in a second. I'm really excited. There's a lot, lot happening. Uh, back to the tutorial though. Let's uh, have a look. So um, I made this spooky haunted house on the right hand side. I'll repeat again. I'd like you all to use black if you want to get this. Sorry, do what you want, but I suggest using black. Um, I will be switching to black uh, after I use gray just to show you the general shape so you can really see it on my purple. Um, but yeah, feel free to customize the house, obviously, right? You don't need to do everything the exact same. I'll tell you about the basic shapes that I used and the basic strategies. You can like add more towers or add more roofs, things like that. Um, but yeah, mainly I wanted it to look kind of spooky, inspired by Monster House. We looked at photos of Monster House and kind of used this whole mouth idea with the windows and just kind of expanded from there. So that's my plan. I'd recommend in terms of your brush, I would probably use a medium round brush. Any like medium sized brush like this, just so you can get all those nice uh, lines and curves and quick little strokes. So again, you can dip into your black paint, okay? I am going to use a more of a light gray just so you can really see what I'm doing. I know this from previous, black on purple does not show up well on camera. <laughs> Okay, so again, one more time. I just want to make sure no one gets mixed up. Use plain black paint. I am using gray just so you can see what's happening. I will replace the gray with black once I show you the shape. All right, so let's start on the bottom. And the bottom as well, you don't really need to worry about straightening anything out on the bottom or anything because we, are, we will be adding this kind of green mist around the house so you can just kind of leave the bottom open we're just focusing on the sides and the top so i've got my gray ready again use black use black i'm going to start just maybe a little left of halfway again if the paint is wet that's okay as long as you don't dip your fingers in it like i just did see those little fingerprints whoops i'm just going to start with a long rectangle again you can see it's a little off center it's a little on the left here to leave more room for the house on the other side Long rectangle with kind of like a long triangle on top. Excuse me as I look straight ahead here so I can get this at least a little bit uh, accurate. Okay, so long rectangle and then a triangle on top. Uh, my triangles, I like to make them kind of long height wise. So I kind of bring the tip up a lot and I like to kind of curve them in. So you'll notice these aren't straight lines, they kind of curve in and then come to a nice tip at the top. Curve in, nice tip at the top. Uh, this outline as well, you can be, you can either outline it with black as you should be doing with black rather than gray, or you can kind of fill in shapes as you go, either one works. I personally like to outline things and then kind of fill it in after, so that's always up to you what you wanna do. Um, and I'll just point out too, uh, I think it looks spookier when things are kind of tilted, when things are kind of slanted. See lots of little slants and stuff, so don't worry if things aren't perfectly straight. I think it'll just add to your house. What do you think about sugar skulls? Ooh, that would be cool too. I might just see what uh, some craft stores have or what I can order online sushi and see what I can do in terms of painting those things like ceramics and things like that. We'll see, we'll see. There might be more than just pumpkins on Saturday. Oh, thanks for shouting out Danny. Yeah, go follow Danny if you haven't. <laughs> You tried to shout out, you tagged her, it works, it works. Yeah, thank you, Moose, thank you. I used a few different inspos, but uh, Monster House was a big one just for the face at least. All right, so once you've got that done, I'll keep catching up on chat in a second. Um, I'm going to do kind of the main face of the house where the actual scary uh, Monster House part is. So I'm gonna go just kind of near the bottom of the roof here, bottom of this little triangular roof. I'm just gonna do an angled line, or I guess an angled curve kind of coming up like that. 
And then again, I'm going to make this purposely tilted. I'm going to tilt a little up and bring it across. That's not even tilted a whole lot. Let's tilt it more. Yeah, there we go. So you can see if you didn't like something you did, you made, you can just kind of do it again. I'm also going to end it off by doing a little curve just so it looks like it's kind of falling off that way, almost, uh, almost completed. So again, curve up, straight across, curve down. go. And again, you can see just redo things. Redo things if you make mistakes. Make it taller if you need to. It's just better to do these things now and then you're comfortable with the shape and you can do all the details later. All right, I'm just going to kind of uh, show where the roof is by doing another angled line coming across. So this is going to be the roof of this piece here. I'm trying to make it parallel to this line here. I need to have a look straight on. That's better. Okay, there we go. That's a raid! Cheap Trick Conjurers! Oh, it's been a minute since I've seen you. What's up? Hello! Thank you for shouting out Cheap Trick. What were you up to? I'm gonna just catch up on the other uh, comments here. Thanks for the follow, Mythical Daydreams Bilbo. Thank you very much. Guys, I'm in the middle of a tutorial, so sorry that no alerts went off, but welcome in either way. I used to use one uh, guacamole display. Oh, cool. Oh, for white pumpkins. That's a cool idea, Danny. Oh, thanks, Danny. Melted dolly painting. Oh, cool. So you've done it before, Cindy. Uh, yes, uh, Emma, I get them in bulk from from Michael's. I haven't bought them in a while because I ordered a lot previously, but yes, correct. Michael's. Uh, Minty Grandma, got a new phone. Uh, hard finding you. So, Oh, excellent. Okay. Sounds good, Grandma. Thanks. Yeah, canine. It's a lot. Again, Cheap Trick Conjurers, welcome in. If you want to tell everybody what you were up to, uh, feel free. Streaming art. Yes, let us know about your art. I'm just in the middle of teaching, so I'm going to go back and forth from chatting, okay? All right, everybody. I'm just going to close off the bottom of the house here with just any sort of line. It doesn't need to match the top. Again, this will be covered up anyway. And I'm going to do a little leaning tower uh, coming out from this side first here. So I have a tower kind of coming straight up or relatively straight and then a big lean over here. So I'm going to start with just my leaning tower over here. Just another rectangle. It's very similar to this, just kind of putting it up here. Rectangle. Again, I'm going to look straight on here, get it a little more accurate. And same idea. I want that uh, kind of overhanging triangle with a nice tall peak there all kind of falling apart. There we go. All right. Hey, girl. Love the Halloween painting. I saw you. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yes. Here's what we're painting. So again, it's a tutorial. So I'm going step by step through it. This is the one. Yeah. James, welcome in as well. I was coloring commission fuzzy poster. Oh, okay. Sorry if you post a link there. If you want to post a link, feel free to uh, whisper. Um, Gray, Miss Groke, either one of them would be happy to post anything for you just to show everybody here what you were working on. Spirit finger alerts. Do you find that Michaels has better deals than Blick? Oh, canine. So I'm in Canada and we don't have Blick here, unfortunately. We can have... Uh, we can have things shipped from Blick, but it's very expensive in the end. Even though they're a good deal, it's very expensive to have things shipped across the border, especially right now. So um, I don't often order there. I think from what I've heard from my American friends, Blick is kind of the way to go. Maybe anyone who wants to pop in and give that suggestion, they can. But uh, for me, it's Michaels. Yeah, Michaels and Curry's. All right, everybody, I'm going to do another tower coming up out of this roof. 
This one is a little more straight, just relative to the roof. So because the roof is a little tilted like that, we're gonna do now a straight up and down um, tower. So again, it's not going straight to the canvas, it's going straight relative to the roof. This one's gonna be behind this one, but for now, if you need to overlap them, that's fine. And you can always just uh, use the details and highlights a little later to show which one is in front and which one's behind. So I'm doing a tall rectangle again. I would say this is maybe the tallest one. We want this one to reach up nice and high. That's pretty good. And another big triangle. So I know it looks a little shaky. I did a few things extra. I did a couple little extra lines, couple things just to readjust. So that's okay if yours looks that way too. Again, I encourage you to do that to get all your shapes the way you want them. And I'm gonna leave this here just for a minute, just so you can see kind of everything in the light gray, because in a second, I'm about to cover it all with black, okay? I'm gonna catch up to you and cover it with black because that's what you should be doing. Um, if you wanna go ahead and start filling yours in with black, go ahead. If you haven't been filling it in, please do that now. Yeah, tell us more about these posters, Cheap Chick. They would rock with black, like, oh, posters I use neon. Oh my gosh, that looks so, that sounds so fun. Cheap Trick, are you in our Discord? I'd love if you uh, wanted to share that in our Art Share channel. Or again, if you want to send a link over to uh, Miss Groak or Gray, we'd love to see it. Oh, I've never heard of Jerry's Artorama, Emma. Interesting. Thanks for shouting out, James. Got it, my bad. Oh, no worries. Yeah, Todd, I know Todd likes Blick. Blick is very cheap. There you go. Didn't mean that stuff. Oh, no worries, no worries. Just a website. Oh, okay, no worries. Again, if you, yeah, if you want to share anything, we're happy to share it for you. It's just spam reasons. You know how it is. Thank you so much for paying. Yeah, really informative. Good. I color with markers and pencils, so I appreciate learning about paint. Amazing. I'm glad you've been enjoying. Yeah, I love doing them, so I'm really glad you've enjoyed as well. Okay, I'll say that you need 40 canvases. Blick is covered. Okay, yeah, I figured. Are these reposted? Grandma, yes. Um, these will stay, these videos, if that's what you're asking, these videos stay on Twitch. Um, and then they get moved to YouTube eventually. I'm a little behind on the YouTube uploading, but they do go to YouTube eventually. All right, everyone, I'm gonna concentrate on filling this in with black now. We need to fill this in with black so we can put some details on top later. So again, you can be doing that right now. I'm going to as well. So you'll probably lose some of these shapes. You'll lose like this edge here or the roof and things like that. That's okay. This was more just to help you visualize and to kind of teach you about all the shapes. We will bring them all back with some nice highlights later. So really you're just worried about the outside edge right now. Everything else inside can be combined and messy. Keep chatting guys, I'll catch up in a minute. Do, 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 do. We always get so much good information in the chat I find during tutorials because people ask about materials and questions like that and then we have a few, a few people chime in. It's always so interesting to me because I learn too. I learn about where to look for things and what certain things should cost and good quality items. It's really nice. So you can see I'm just going quick here, filling this all in. Again, the bottom can be messy. It doesn't need to be a perfectly straight line. This will all be covered anyway. Need more already. So I am trying to keep the edges pretty clean. So just kind of taking my time on certain curves and certain straight lines. But also when we add the highlights, we add some like light blue highlights everywhere. You can use that to straighten things out too. You can kind of overlap the black and straighten out if you need to. And if there's one request I can make, just try and make sure you're not leaving any blobs around the black. You can see some ridges on mine, some little blobs. I'm going to make sure I'm smoothing those out because those are gonna take a longer time to dry. And we wanna make sure this is dry in the next little bit just so we can work on it. We still leave a lot of time for it to dry, but 
If we have big blobs, it would take a lot longer. So just make sure you're smoothing out the blobs. I did switch to a big brush. I guess I didn't say that either, if you're wondering. I'm using a big brush just to fill in, just because it's a little more efficient. Okay, I'm just getting this last little roof on, then I'll catch up with chat here. Switch, obviously, to brushes if you need a little more... a little more of a precise brush for certain things, like rooftops and things. should be good that's about covered so again a fully covered haunted house so i'll give a minute or two at least just for everyone to catch up if you're still adding give me a chance to catch up on the chat here see a lot going on thank you cherry's also nice oh, okay cool comparable to blick oh interesting I have an Instagram, I guess I'll post. Yes, uh, post the link here. Do I whisper? Yes, please uh, whisper to Grok. I, that may have been dealt with here, but whisper to Miss Grok or Gray in chat. No, no, you're fine. Mm hmm. Oh, very cool. Chatty chat chat, yeah. Based in Illinois, shipping varies. Of course. I have some glow in the dark paint. Might add some to this painting. Maybe the ghost or the windows. I think the ghost would be really cool. I think the moon would be very cool as well, Sharon. I don't know if it's like, it can mix maybe with orange paint or if you'd make it a white moon. I think both of those would be neat. And the, the uh, windows, as you said, I think if you did all three, that would be cool or focused on one. That would be amazing though. Glow in the dark, what an idea. Oh yeah, I wanted to get maybe glow in the dark paint for Saturday for the uh, pumpkin pouring. So watch for that. There we go. Perfect. Thank you, Cheap Trick. Yes, there we go. So everyone in chat, if you want to check out Cheap Trick Conjurers, uh, Instagram is right there. Usually I show the Instagram uh, on my screen, but I can't just because of the tutorial right now. I don't want to confuse too much. Looks good, though. Sugar skulls everywhere. Someone was just talking about sugar skulls. Click that link right there. You'll see some beautiful ones. Oh yeah, they do hypnosis too. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that. Yep. They do live stream hypnosis. Uh, live hypnosis streams. <laughs> yep. Alyssa, you can. Yes, please do. And welcome in. Nice to see you. Yeah, painter, supply, rec anything you want. Yep. Any recommendation is good. All right, I'll do one more quick minute just in case anyone's still filling in that haunted house. And we should be dry enough to do a nice moon up here now. And we wanna do two steps on the moon. So we're gonna do a white step and then an orange step. That's gonna allow our moon to be nice and bright. You can keep the moon white if you want, if you don't like the orange. I thought the orange was nice just because it uh, won't really combine with the ghosts, right? The ghosts can be the only pure white thing in the painting and then we have an orange moon, but again, do as you wish. Yeah, you're ki are you, you're kind of into hypnosis, right, James? Kind of, in a way. Oh yeah, Alyssa's in the Discord too. I think she maybe wanted to recommend to uh, the chat, but thank you, James. Yeah, I thought you were, I don't know about hypnosis. It was something, prob best in Discord. Oh yeah, either way, Alyssa's in there for sure. She may have been responding to the one who was asking about uh, canvases and stuff and paints. But good call, good call. Both, yep, <laughs> both is good. All right, so again, let's have a look at the moon. We just, so we can see what we're doing here. So I, I like to do just a nice big full moon, nice and spooky, a big full moon. Ooh, it's a full moon on Saturday, by the way. That's very exciting. Wow, wow, wow. Anyway, uh, just kind of in the top left-hand side, it's pretty big. It's not the biggest moon. You could obviously make it bigger if you want. There's all this room here you can work with. I would call this maybe medium size. 
medium to large. Um, again, I'm going to start with a layer of white. And then once that dries, we can put orange on top. That'll allow the orange to be nice and bright on top of this dark purple. If we were to try to do orange first on top, it would make it look kind of muddy. In fact, I did that on this one and I did a few extra layers of orange to get it this bright. But easier thing to do is white layer first, orange layer second. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to use my medium round brush. Use whatever brush you like for nice uh, medium sized circles. For me, it's my medium brush. I'm using white paint. Again, we'll turn it orange later, but for now it's white. And I'm just doing a nice medium to large circle in the top left hand area. Maybe a little bigger than that and a little more round. So I'm just going to switch it over here so I can see what I'm doing. Not doing a bun shape, I'm doing a circle. <laughs> Fill it in as well. And for circles, I don't know, I just really take my time around the edge. I just try and go little bits at a time and then I kind of look at it further away to see if it's more oval, adjusting as I need to. So just take your time, make it a little bit bigger at a time as you adjust. You know, you're just kind of expanding the edges a little bit at a time. Almost there, just doing the last little bit. There we go. And same thing as the haunted house. We want to kind of smooth this out a little bit. Smooth, 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 smooth. There we go, just so it dries a little bit quicker. And that's my moon. A little bit. Ah, yes. Yeah, what was your book? Again, I don't think it was hypnosis. It was something kind of like that, though. Goals to debunk incorrect ideas most people have about hypnosis. Good for themselves. Yeah, I do private sessions and I stream short ones. Yes, I remember that. I still haven't caught one. I still follow you, follow you, Cheap Trick, and I've never caught a, uh, a shortened version of your hypnosis sessions. I've always wanted to, though. I was so intrigued by that. I'd never heard anybody who streams hypnosis sessions, so I thought that was so neat. Yeah, you got paint on your face, right side. Oh, just in front of your ear. Oh yeah, right hand. Oh, is that right? Yep, sure is. Thank you. <laughs> Surprised you caught that. Well, I guess I was looking like this, so maybe you saw it there. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> All clean. <laughs> Aaron likes to use paint as makeup. Fact. <laughs> All this, it's just all paint on my eyes. Yep. <laughs> oh man. I did that recently for one. I just popped a little paint in my hair by accident. It was the brush that hit it, I, from what I remember. Oh dear. All right, so again, I'm gonna leave a couple extra minutes actually just for the black to dry a little bit more. Mine is very, very wet. If you wanna join me in giving your canvas a little wiggle, that might help. A little fan like this. Do, 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 do. Because all the other things we want to wait uh, to add, so for example, the green mist, we want to have some details down here before we add it. The tree, we want to make sure our moon is orange before adding the tree, so we do need this to dry a little bit. So give it a little wiggle. Yeah, only one, unfortunately. And f yeah, fortunately and unfortunately, sure. Yeah, another. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wolf Grip, thanks for the follow. And that was uh, Jalib Jalibka, welcome in. No alerts are showing just because I'm doing a step-by-step -step tutorial, but welcome in. Feel free to chat. Painting is makeup, what an idea. It's just face paint, you know? It's just, uh, <laughs> it's essentially just like you're doing a little face paint thing. I haven't done it actually, but just accidentally a bunch of times. Oh, Emma, that's cool. There you go. 
Yeah, give them a follow. Maybe you can uh, start raiding each other. That's a good idea. Tarot card readings. Ooh. Yeah, my friend's doing that for Halloween. If you've ever seen Cyborg Joe in the chat. Oops. Something just fell. Um, <laughs> if you've ever seen Cyborg Joe in the chat, she's doing a special Halloween stream on Saturday night and she's doing some readings as well. Ooh, spooky. Are you doing anything spooky, uh, cheap trick for Halloween? Is someone of you ever log in a Discord and the screen stays black when I got notification? Um, where are you logging in? On your desktop? Like in a browser, Nancy? Or is it to, through an app? All right, we're getting there. And the black, again, doesn't need to be totally dry, just at least kind of sticky so we can add some colors on top. The colors we're adding are all quite dark. They're kind of all shades of blue aside from these lighter ones. So we're gonna start with darker ones anyway and work our way lighter. And we'll do that as our moon is drying. Log into the browser. Oh, interesting. Um, that hasn't happened to me, Nancy. Uh, if I could make a suggestion though, I do think the app is a little bit better. Um, so if you don't mind downloading stuff to your desktop computer or your phone, uh, there's a dis de excuse me, a Discord app to download. And I find that works a lot better. Maybe, um, maybe try refreshing, removing your cookies, things like that, all the uh, standard browser things, deleting history. Mm-hmm. Or maybe an update is needed, I'm not quite sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always said, James, uh, those stage ones kind of get me, but I believe in the, I believe, mo yeah, I believe that a uh, hypnotist is, it's just, it's just, you know, we've talked about this. The ones that came to your school and they were all like, we're gonna hypnotize kids. Sometimes those were a little bit of a bust. But that's why Cheap Trick is doing what they're doing, so they can, like they said, educate people on it when it's actually all about, mm-hmm. About legit hypnosis, <laughs> yep. Okay, let's have a look. Some of my parts are shiny. I'll give it another little whirl and then we can keep going here. I know I really caked on the paint too, so I'm hoping I'm one of the only ones with this problem. If anyone wants to speak up, if they need a couple extra minutes for their black to dry, let me know. Otherwise, I'll try and move ahead in the next minute or two for you after this dries a little bit more. There you go. Oh yeah, not a huge fan of the, a fan of the stage hypnosis. A lot of times they give people the wrong ideas. Yes, they kind of make it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Yeah, and as James said, his was very clearly fake, and that was not very motivating <laughs> to believe, you know? Lynn, welcome in. How are you? Oh, never heard of him, canine. I'm late. Oh, Lynn, no worries. You're only late if you wanted to paint, and even so, you could still catch up if you wanted. But welcome in. Okay. So let's talk about the haunted house just in this last minute and then we can start to paint it. I'm sure you're all eagerly waiting to uh, get these details on here. So um, I do a few things. I'll kind of point them out and then we'll do them all one at a time. Uh, first, oh, you need some time? Perfect. So I'll talk about it, Alyssa. Maybe I'll give an extra minute or two and then we can move ahead. Perfect, thank you for speaking up. I was worried I was the only one. <laughs> We're in it together, excellent. So yeah, how uh, about we look at the painting? We can talk about it a bit. Um, so I do a few things. I start with a very dark kind of navy blue and I do some just kind of like wooden slats almost. Uh, some of them are just going horizontal. So mostly on the towers, I do some horizontal just stripes to make it look like wood or wooden slats. Right here, right here. These are all very dark blue horizontal lines. You can barely see them on top of the black, but they are there. In the bulk of the house here, I make them slanted just to make it look a little more like broken down and there's the big face here. So everything's kind of slanting in with the eyebrows that are all slanting in as well. Uh, I then make the blue, the navy blue a little bit lighter so that I can make some shingles. And all these are just using my medium brush and kind of stroking down to make little shingles everywhere. They're right here, they're up here. 
up here and here. So anywhere where there's a rooftop, those are all kind of the shingly uh, patterns there. And then I like to take a nice light blue and you can see I really highlight, for example, the nice mouth here. So we'll do kind of two curves up, two curves down. Got some nice big teeth here. And then I take the light blue and also highlight certain areas. So we have our moon up here. So there's going to be highlighted areas on the left hand sides and on the bottoms or kind of like, I guess, upper areas if anything's kind of slanting this way. Oops, here, here. You can kind of see where those are. And then we'll lay on a layout for the uh, windows. But once again, we want to uh, kind of put those on, let them dry. Again, we're going to do the whole method of adding white first and then putting on the golden yellow. So, mm hmm. Love the painting. Thank you, Lynn. Really? Can we hit this? Right. Did private sessions. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Here, sure. Mm hmm. Oh, thanks, Cheap Trick. Oh, you can make it though. I'm teaching it now. I know you're uh, not following along right now, but you could always uh, follow later. And that was purple, and it's a nice uh, phthalo blue and red mix, mostly red though. Can you show the volcano? Sure, Lisa. Yes, I'd love to. So, again, I'm just still giving some time. I heard we all might need a little bit of time. Where is he? Oh, he's right here. <laughs> I've moved him to my lap. Him. <laughs> Here's the volcano. Ta da! So there's lots of purple on it right now because I was just mixing all the purple. There's some blue hanging out here. And the black and white is still wet over here. Oh, he's getting so big. Natty, you're on. Thanks for the follow and welcome in. Volcano! Oh, he's so heavy. <laughs> Things are hanging off of it. Oh my goodness. There's hair stuck in there. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> It's really collecting everything. Oh, my arm. All right, hope you had a good look. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Back to the lap it goes. I'm not picking that up a lot. <laughs> mm. Right, you started the lavender fields recently, Lynn. I remember now. It's going well. I'm glad you're splitting it up into a few different sessions. I think that's good just to let things dry and everything and go nice and slow. Man, I don't know what I did to this black paint. It's just very, very wet. I'll try smoothing it out a bit and see if that helps. So if you're having the same issue as me, the black is just still very wet and it's only in certain spots. I use a clean brush and I just kind of wipe along like this. You can maybe see oop, how it kind of makes it a little more matte. It's because you're spreading out the wet paint and allowing it to have a lower uh, or I guess a larger surface to dry on. So I just kind of wipe across like this trying to spread across those wet bits and that way they have more space to dry. They're not as contained in their large spots. Nice big break for everybody though as we're doing this. That really helps, that really helps. And again, that's an easy way to see what's wet. If it's shiny, it's very wet. You can kind of see a little bit of shine in there, but for the most part, it's pretty matte and you want it matte so, uh, so that it's dry. Oh, it's done. Okay. Post it. Yes, please do. Cool cat. Yeah. What time are we at? 52. One more minute. I'll go ahead. I know I keep saying another minute. We're going to do one more. And if you need more time, just please take your time. Maybe you need a couple extra minutes. I'll go slow with these steps. I just want to make sure, uh, those who are ready can move on. So the brush I'll be using is the medium round brush. I think I said that already. You can wash it off if you haven't. I'm gonna start mixing my color and then I'll start applying it. So I'm mixing a navy blue. So it's gonna be our darkest of all of the blues that we use. So I'm using blue on my plate and then I'm mixing in some black, trying to darken it up into more of a navy blue. So this color won't show up super well on the black, but enough that you should be able to see it. So remember when I showed you here on my painting, you could barely kind of see, but especially if you let it hit the light, you can see the diagonal strokes, the horizontal strokes. So just know it won't be super prominent. I find the highlights will really kind of bring out the shape again. This is more just kind of background filler. Oh, 
Oh, a nice deep navy blue. What is on the shelf under the volcano plane? The next shelf down. Oh, I can show you that in a second, Cindy, if you want. You can see it there, but I can bring it forward if you need. All right, so again, I'm not worried about the windows right now. I'm just going to do all of this background. Ooh, a little dark. Let me see. So I'm avoiding the rooftops. I want to go in the uh, tower parts and this main uh, house part here. So in the tower, I'm going to do some horizontal lines. So I'm just using this color here. Mix navy blue. Oh, okay. Uh, so navy blue is the color I mixed. So lots of blue and just a little bit of black. I don't have navy blue premix, so I'm just using my regular blue, which is thalo blue, and then some black to make it darker. Hope that helps. Let me know if it's not clear. All right, I'm doing some horizontal lines in the tower. So these horizontal lines, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between so that you have some black showing through. Showing in between. There you can see it hitting the light. Again, this navy blue will be hard to see. I'll try my best to show you as I complete it. Horizontal lines. Color the blue on the painting. I love it. Oh, thank you. Yo, Nessa, what's up? Purple pants splatters in my one. Oh, dear. <laughs> Good thing, though. <laughs> kind of artistic and cool looking, maybe? Hello, Mr. Noodle. Yep, he's over there. He's peeking. Okay, I'm doing some more horizontal lines on the other towers. So I have this tilty tower here, again, it's combined with the black, but what you can do is just kind of continue your lines down into this area here and kind of uh, re-sketch out where your tower is. So again, I'm just going to look at it so I can get these straight on here, and then I'll show you. And when I say horizontal, I mean horizontal um, compared to the tilt of the tower. So see how if I get this to, yep, you can see how I've tilted them. So they're going along horizontal to the tower. So the tower is more like this and all the lines are going horizontal this way. And then when I move it back, it's all kind of tilted together. And you're bringing this down into the black area here because this tower is going to kind of come and overlap it's overlapping on some of those areas, right? So you can bring it down a little further. And then I'm doing the same thing on this top tower here, horizontal lines coming down the tower. And I like this tower behind this tower. So the uh, the tilted tower is in front of the straight tower. So when I'm doing my horizontal lines on the straight tower, I'm making sure to end them before they overlap this other tower here. So this line's getting shorter. This one will get shorter because I don't want it to overlap. Okay, again, I realize it's a little hard to see. Hopefully you can kind of see right about there. See all those little tilted bits? Again, small detail, but still shows up on the black. Dear Aaron, in your prompt stream labs, it will say both Twitch and Facebook Live, just so you know. Oh, wait, what? In my prompt? It still says both Twitch and Facebook. Oh, in my stream labs. Oh, it does. Oh, I see. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need to remove that. I don't want that. <laughs> don't want to confuse anybody. I see. Thank you very much. I'll just open that up for later so I remember. Thanks, Lynn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm no longer doing both there. All right, then I have one more spot to add some lines. I want to go in the, again, main area of the house here, kind of the spooky kind of uh, face area. So I'm just going to add the lines straight on. I'm not going to worry about where the windows are. 
and I'm adding them at an angle. So I'm gonna start at the edge of the main part of the house, so right around here. I'm gonna angle them down to the right, and then I'm gonna come from this side and come down to the left, so they kind of all meet in the middle, angled in. So here I go here. And same thing, kind of using them as stripes. So I'm leaving some gaps in between so I can see some black and then navy and then black and then navy. We will be going over top of these for windows. So again, don't worry about the windows or the mouth for now. Obviously you don't need to go all the way to the bottom because the mouth is gonna go here anyway, but just don't worry about uh, the shape for now is all I'm saying. I'm just trying to fill up the space above it. So see all those angled lines there? They're filling up that area. I've left the rooftop so that I can put some shingles on there later. <laughs> all the hellos. Love your braid. Thanks, Lynn! Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, just double checking, but yeah, I'm pretty, yep, yeah, that's all done for that color. So I'll give a quick minute. If I can uh, angle this any better, again, I realize it's not the easiest to see, but with each new color, it'll be way easier to see. That's a pretty good angle there. You can see what's going on. It's hard to get uh, the light without making it too direct, you know, you know? Do, 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 do. Da, da, da. Perfect, I'm glad, Lynn. It's always just the, yeah, the dark on dark. There's a lot of dark on dark. Hard to see, can you explain the last lines? No worries, Alicia, yeah, happy to. So the last lines are in this main area here. So the main house, I would say. So we have towers, then we have the main area here. And these lines all kind of tilt in. So they curve, not curve, excuse me, they angle down to the right. And then from this side, they angle down to the left. So they're all kind of meeting in the middle. Maybe you see there, so curve down down, down, down. I can show you the original too. Maybe it's a little easier to see here, just amongst all the other colors. See them all starting here. They come down and then down. It's like a V, exactly. It's like a wide V. Good, yeah, good wording there. You're welcome. I just wanted to do them. You can do them horizontal if you want. I felt the angle was a little nicer just to match with the angry eyes. Everything's kind of moving down in a V shape, exactly. Cool. Glad that helped. Okay, I'm gonna make now a lighter version of the previous color and we're going to start to do some shingles and a few other things kind of mapping out windows and things like that. Uh, so let's make a lighter version. So to make a lighter version of our previous color, we want to grab a little bit of white and mix it into your previous color. So you're mixing it into the blue-black mixture. It'll make it more of a medium navy blue. I would still call it a navy blue, but it's, uh, it's a little lighter now. So again, white paint with your same brush, the medium round brush, mixing it into your blue-black mixture. Okay, so this is going to be the lightest color. It's just kind of in between. And the first thing I want to do with this is make our little shingles. So this will really help us see the rooftops again. So to make some shingles, I'm just grabbing this new color. I'm going to use the tip of my brush and I'm going to pull from up to down in just small little strokes. So I'm going to start maybe at the top of the roof here. And I'm going to push down and pull down like that. So that's one little shingle like that. They're kind of like oval. Pressing, pulling down, pulling down, pulling down. And they're all kind of like in a little row almost. They're all just kind of very close together. Fitting all together like that. And just filling up any of the roof space. So bringing it all the way to the bottom of the triangle. 
anything like that. Maybe one more on the very top. Yay! And again, the triangle will look a lot cleaner later when we add some outlines around it. So for now, we're just filling it in. Uh, let's go to this. So there is a roof on this large part here, right? So we want to make sure we're avoiding this tower, which we put here with the horizontal lines. But we're going all around it. So here are my shingles here. They're just kind of going in a little row, stopping where the tower is. And then doing another row and kind of, you can see, kind of pushing them all nice and tight together. So they don't need to be all the same row by row. You can kind of put them in between, help them interlock a little bit just to fill in a little more space. So tip of the brush pulling down, down, down. All the way to the bottom of this rooftop. You can choose how far down the roof goes. I'm ending about here. So you can see how this tower is becoming a little more prominent in front. Purple Midge. Hi, Aaron. I'm in the right place today. Understand painting more than games. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Welcome in. Oh, Cheat Trick, no worries. Thanks again for the raid so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I assume maybe you're having a snack now or uh, fueling up, but uh, thanks again for popping in. I'm sure some of us will be popping in soon, it sounds like, so that's good. Have a good rest of your Sunday. I'm just on the other side of the roof now, adding these little shingles. See how it's starting to come together now? We can see the tower in front, these shingles in front, or behind, excuse me. <laughs> there you go, yay! I'll do a few more shingles up here. We have two more little rooftops to do. They're kind of polka dotty, but as long as you stroke down a little extra, they make them look a little more like shingles. Oh, printer, welcome back. My art school job really boring. Oh, okay. <laughs> welcome back. I'm sorry you're having a boring time. Hopefully this makes it a little more exciting. Yes, it's going to be a haunted house. Oh, Lynn, I disappoint I want to do it. You forgot the time. Oh, no. Are you, uh, have you painted your canvas purple? Again, I feel like you could catch up here and I'm happy to catch you up with any questions so just feel free Lynn and you know you could probably pop into another stream too and if you want to do uh, this painting while I'm doing something else on Twitch I can definitely help you with questions so no worries yes Cindy that's the beautiful thing about raiding I love choosing people to raid that are relevant because I always feel like you guys will enjoy them too and that's the whole thing everyone kind of floats around loves each other it's really nice mm-hmm Mm hmm yeah. Printer, this is what we're going for here, this guy. So I'm just doing step by step right now. Okay, I have a few other things to do with this color. So it's still kind of the medium, I would call it the medium navy color. So oh, another thing I like to do with this color is start to outline things. So I will be outlining with this color as well as a lighter color. But for now, we just want to outline things so we can see them a little clearer. So I'm taking this color here. And I'm going to do things like the tower here. I'm just going to outline the two sides here. So now you can see the separation again. If you put that little line there, for example. I'm just going to look at this straight on. You can outline the rooftops. So again, you can see those inside edges that might be overlapping in the black. And it might not seem super prominent now, but when we add some highlights on top, that'll help as well. Which color? Same color, Sushi. So same color I was just using for the uh, uh, shingles, excuse me. This is what I'm using to outline now. Just using kind of the tip of the brush. It doesn't need to be super, super thick or super, super wide brush strokes. Just anything to get a little bit of an outline so you can see everything. So 
Yep, bottom of the roof here. Edge, the top. Two sides of this tower, so you can see that a little clearer. It's mostly to help you. Some of these lines will stay there. Some of them will be covered up with lighter colors. But still nice just to kind of get the whole shape of this haunted house going here. And I'm just going to look at it here to finish off. So you are pretty much outlining the whole thing. Just all those individual shapes that we started with. All the rectangles, all the triangles, rooftops. Subtle, but enough that you can see it. I'm just going to leave that here for a minute or two, and then we want to use this to also kind of map out the windows and the mouth as well. Again, the lighter colors. Yeah, no worries, Sushi. The lighter colors will help with all of those things, but for now we're going to uh, map them out so we can uh, highlight them later. Yes, I know you're so good. Oh, thanks, but it's not paint and purple yet. Okay, but I'm still watching. Sure, sure, exactly, Lynn. And, uh, you know, if you're planning on doing this later, um, again, you have questions, maybe. You can ask them now, and then that way you're fully prepared for later. My other just asked, who is that? Is that your friend on Skype? <laughs> yeah, just me chatting with Cindy. <laughs> My friend on Skype, that's funny. We just Skype all day. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, the haunted house is a lot of layers, a lot of planning. I find at the very end with the bright colors, it obviously comes all together. We can start to see all the nice details. So for now, it still looks kind of messy and dark, but we'll take our time with the light colors later. So I'm going to use the same color again, still the same color. So the same color as shingles, same color as outlines. And I just want to map out where the face is going, where the windows are going, just to help us kind of plan ahead for later. So I'm going to do uh, the windows first. We have a couple kind of, I'll show you, windows with round tops. So I did a nice window here in a tower, here in a tower. So they have a horizontal line and then a nice line coming up, curving and coming down. So I'm doing that twice. Anywhere near the middles of the towers. So there's one. That was a horizontal line, up, curve around, down. And then on this big tower here, the big straight one, horizontal bottom, up, curve around, back down. There it is. I leave this one blank. If you want to add a window, go ahead. A nice tilty window with your tilty tower. Min, please. Sure. I'll give you a quick minute with uh, those windows and then we'll do the little face together. There we go. <laughs> Wookie, I love that. Nice. And then what the other name? Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> My other. <laughs> Taking form. Exactly. Yeah. There's a little bit of patience with this one for, uh, for sure. Uh, for those who were watching on Twitch when I designed it, I was uh, going back and forth with a lot of things. I mean, like, oh, that doesn't look great. But as usual, <laughs> as usual, sticking it out helps. Remembering that the lighter colors on top of the darker really help to clean up things. And just remembering, too, if anything isn't looking right, you can always go over top with black. Start again. All of that good stuff. Acrylic paint is great for that. Going over, starting again. All right, it's been a good minute there. So I'm just going to go over again, just a general map out of the face so that when we go on with the light colors, we can be confident and do it nice and clean. So I'll just show you the face of the house again. So we have some angry angry looking squares. They're not full squares. They angle down to the middle. So they're following the angles of our navy blue lines from earlier, right? So a nice square and you cut off the top with an angle. Square, top with an angle. These are going to be obviously a little higher up 
and kind of centered, okay? So let's put those on. So even if you want, you can start with a square. If that's a little easier for you, start just with a regular square. And then just chop it, just angle it like that. And you can see maybe you'll have a tiny bit of overlap, but once we put the lighter color on top, you'll barely see this color underneath. So just use this as a little sketch. And then when we add the light color, you can be a little more careful and a little more clean. So there's my angled square after playing with it a bit. Doing a matching one on the other side, just opposite. It's going to angle down to the left. Again, if you make something you don't like, just use some black, cover it up. Maybe you have a little, little botch here or something that you don't want. Just use some black, cover it up. It's not there anymore. No one needs to know. Loving this. Thanks, Sharon. I think this is such a fun one. Again, I kind of hope to do something similar to this on Friday. Just a little more like fun, spooky, not too complicated. So look out for that. I still don't know the design, but I have ideas. Okay, and then for the mouth, everybody, what I do is I do angled lines or I guess curved lines coming up to the middle and then back down. So we're just kind of doing the top of the mouth, I guess. We don't really worry about the bottom. So we're starting about here, so close to the bottom. And we're going to do a curved line coming up to the middle. And then coming back down to the other side. Kind of falls off the other side. Oops, I'm gonna make that a little bit more even. So there's an example of me doing something that I didn't like and now I have two lines. I want to remove one. I'm just going to take black and remove it. Disappear. Goodbye. It's like it was never there. A little better. And we're actually doing a second set of those lines. It's almost like we make a lip. So see how we did the first one? We are now gonna do a second one with a little bit of a gap just underneath it. Those windows look like angry eyes and a good, oh yes, <laughs> oh I'm stupid, no you're not stupid. Exactly, it's the whole point, yep. <laughs> no, it's fun, you kind of figured that out yourself. Exactly, they're angry eyes. All right, so I'm just doing a second version of those curved lines going up and down. So again, it's kind of like we're doing like a little curled lip in a way. And then if you want, if you want, you can practice adding your teeth. In the end, we will be using a light blue for those, but if you wanna practice some long triangles kind of coming down from the lip and some coming up from the bottom, you can do that just to practice. We'll be doing these in a lighter blue to make them really prominent, but those teeth, they're all kind of upside down triangles coming down and then right side up triangles coming up. I'm just gonna add a little more black down here because I'm noticing that my mouth doesn't have a lot of room. So I'm just adding more black to make more room for the mouth later. If you need to do that, you can. Maybe you have lots of room. I did not have a lot of room, so I just moved it a little further down. So again, those were all practice things. You don't even have to do them now. I just find it a little easier to do them now to practice and then put light blues on top. Aaron, in those jugs, you only have red, blue, yellow, black, white, correct? All other colors are mixing. Correct, yes. I try and keep it very straightforward, Cindy, so that people don't have to buy like 20 different colors, you know? Um, I like to stick to the three primaries, red, yellow, blue, phthalo blue specifically. I just love how um, how bright it is. And then black and white. Mm-hmm. My house looks like an angry old man. That's perfect. <laughs> that is great. Exactly. Cindy says it. That's what I want it to look like. I want it to make it look like a... Uh, just like a falling apart, angry looking house. So if it looks like an angry old man, I think you're uh, you're pretty much on point there. <laughs> it's whatever you want, but I think that's perfect. Okay, so once we've done those things, everybody, we're actually just leaving the house for a little bit just to dry. And we wanna work on a few other things. We've got our moon, we can add some of the, uh, the tree on top, things like that. Exactly, that's what I would go for. I think that's perfect.
Okay, so whenever you're ready, you can start washing off your medium round brush. And we're going to mix a new color. We're going to mix a nice bright orange or whatever color you want your moon to be because we're going to go back to working on the moon. So if you had different plans for your moon, you can start to prepare for those different plans. But my plan is a nice orange. So if you're like me and you have only primary colors, I'm going to mix together red and yellow. Red and yellow to make orange. So using my medium round brush, which I cleaned off by the way, if I didn't say that, please clean it off. Mommy Shark, thanks for the follow a couple minutes ago, by the way. I am just swirling together yellow and red. Kind of like a bright, yeah, a very bright orange. Any like bright, almost like a pumpkin orange, I think is great. Even a bright yellow, uh, bright yellow green. Oh yeah, I think there'd be a lot. I even, I think, debated a green looking moon or was it the, I was debating the different colors of the moon versus the mist. I remember thinking about different colors though, even like a light purple, a light blue. There's so many good ones. Just anything bright, I think. Yeah, green, ooh, it would be so spooky. I'm sticking with my orange. Here's my orange. And you can see now that you put it on top of the white, it stays lovely and bright. If we were to try and put this on top of purple, I'll do a little there. You can barely see it. It's very transparent. The purple makes it uh, hard to see. So because it's on white, we have this beautiful bright orange. And you've done most of the work of shaping it up. Now you just need to kind of stay inside the lines. Even if it goes a little outside again, it will kind of disappear on top of the purple anyway. But for the most part, you've done the hard work. There it is, getting filled in. And same thing, I just like to smooth it all out just so it looks a little more even. I was doing that with other steps, but this step as well, just kind of doing larger brush strokes lightly, helps smooth out all the paint, makes it look a little less streaky. There it is, ooh, nice and glowy. Very good. I'll give a minute or two if you're still filling that in. And if you still feel like your orange is not bright enough for your liking or maybe a little transparent, um, you can always do a third coat on top if you want. I'll only be doing the two. I found it was bright enough just with two. Uh, but if you want to do three, then you'll just have to wait for it to dry for maybe 10 minutes and then go on top again. It's all up to you though. Okay, just as a heads up, next step, we'll be actually going back to the haunted house for a little bit because we don't want to put our tree right on top of a fresh moon, but we'll leave it dry, uh, leave it to dry for a few minutes and then we can go back on top again. We're going to work on the windows next. If I have to finish later, my house is still wet. Oh, okay, Phoenix, no worries. Uh, still wet with the blues because if, if it's still wet with the blues, that's okay. Uh, if it's still wet with the black though, you might need to finish later, yeah just to make it a little less complicated. I was, go I was going on top of like a sticky black. It wasn't the driest, but uh, yeah, all up to you. No problem. The black, ah, oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah, probably best to give it a uh, little bit of a rest. Uh, you could even uh, wait uh, for a couple more steps. We can do the ghosties together, whatever you like. But same as I said to Lynn Phoenix, I know you're here a lot for my usual Twitch streams. If you're working on it during a usual Twitch stream and you have like a question or two, you're welcome to ask, always. But otherwise you can follow along with the video as you know. Let's have a look here. So yeah, what I'm gonna do next is the windows. So we have this kind of glowy, kind of golden yellow coming through. I only did one coat for these actually, and it's because I used white. White is like the savior color for all these nice bright colors on top. So that's what I'll be doing. Oh, Mr. Doctor, please. It's scary. I don't like looking at the numbers, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> Canine, thank you. Okay, 
So yeah, we're gonna do the windows next while we wait for this moon to dry. So I was saying before, if you still have a little bit of the blue that's a little bit wet or anything like that, this should be fine. Um, I'm going to use the same brush, the medium round brush. I've just washed it off. And I'm going to make a gold and yellow color. So I'm using three different colors. I'm using mostly yellow. So I'm just doing a nice big pile of yellow. In the yellow, I'm going to mix white, and that's a big key. We wanna use lots of white because it makes the color nice and opaque on top of the dark color, because we're gonna be going right on top of our black or navy blue, and white is gonna help it show up nice and bright on top. And then the last tiny bit of color we add is just a tiny bit of red, tiny bit of red, because we want it kind of a golden yellow. If you want a very bright yellow, you can just keep the yellow and white together. I like more of a golden glow. It's like a glow, so a little bit of red in there. You can think of it as a golden yellow or a really light orange, but as long as you have white in there, that's what we want. So I'm just going to fill in my windows. You can see how bright that applies on top. If you need to go in with a teeny tiny brush just to be a little more careful, you certainly could. And again, these shapes don't need to be perfect because we will be going around with a nice light blue anyway to kind of uh, clean them all up. So just do your best to fill in most of what you can. If it's a little shaky, that's totally fine. Need more of that color. Cindy, I saw your comment. I'll read it in a second. Just trying to lightly rest it on top. Mine is showing through a little bit, just resting it on top though. Go for here. Very glowy, very bright now, yay. Again, my favorite is adding all these bright colors on top. It just cleans it all up brightens it while still making it stay nice and spooky. Different note with your hair pulled up. The sweater and eyeshadow bring out the light reddish brown in your hair. Very pretty. Oh, thank you! <laughs> Cindy, you're always so nice. Yeah, I did some funky eyeshadow today just to, you know, with the oranges and stuff a little spookier, you know, matching the moon. Again, I like doing my eye makeup. I just don't do it a lot. Again, I find it very kind of artistic, you know? There we go. And that's the other one filled in. So again, you can see they're not the perfect shapes. They're a little messy and it's because we will outline them. So don't worry too much if they're not perfect. And that's the whole point of this house. It's a little bit spooky, a little bit falling apart. So if things are a little bit, yeah, a little bit off, that's okay. That's a little better, cool. Yeah, my yellow turned out very bright. I actually, uh, in my original, it's a little more of a golden yellow just to bring to your attention. You can compare here. These are quite bright. It's very bright in this house. This is a little spookier. So that's just using a tiny bit more red. Hey you, why you do this? Why I do what? Sorel, welcome and what's up? Why I do tutorial? Because I like it, because it's fun. Why I paint? Because it's fun. <laughs> what's up with you, Sorel? Yeah, very bright, wow. I didn't add enough red there. So again, if you want a little more dim, just a little more red. If you want it like this, more yellow and white. Oh, I did that, yes. Okay, I did that, yes. Uh, at the end of the celebration stream yesterday, Sorel, I gifted, uh, I think it was five subs just randomly. So lucky you. <laughs> It was just as part of my thank you. My yellow is still very opaque, even with the white. Oh, really? Okay. Sorel, hold on a second. Sharon, um, I'm gonna actually leave these for a bit before I go on top of them. So just let it dry a bit. You can do a second layer on top. 
Uh, the white seems to be my savior, but I would uh, I would probably just leave it at this point and do a second layer. Yes. Okay, Sorel. <laughs> Thank you very much for those five gifted subs. Little Wolf, that's a good one. Painting is fun. Is here. Painting is fun. You just got gifted a sub. 110 colors. Be Brenda, Jeanette. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you very much. No, thank you. That was, uh, that's very kind. That was my gift for yesterday, Sorel. It was our 1,000 follower celebration I wanted to give back. And you're just trying to give right back. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Sorel, it's so kind. Sharon, yeah, second layer is what I suggest <laughs> for that one. Right? I know. Gets gifted one, gifts five back. My goodness. Too nice. Enjoy your food, please. <laughs> Again, I'm in the middle of a tutorial, but I'll try and chat at the same time. What are you eating? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to let this yellow sit here, this golden yellow. Again, golden or more yellow, whatever you like. Uh, before we add in all the light blues and details on top. Because we like to kind of cover up the windows too with some little crisscrosses. So we want to let them dry a bit. We're going to move back up here and we're going to do a tree on top of our moon. Let's take a look at this spooky tree. So we're going back to black paint. So you won't really see it on top of the purple super well. It is still there, but not as not as well as on top of the moon. That's another reason I wanted the moon. So we get all these beautiful branches on top, making it look nice and spooky. So we can work on that a little bit. So whenever I'm doing trees, I always say that I like using the large flat brush and I'm still doing that today. But if you want to use a different brush, if you know of a different brush that gets you some nice thin lines to do some nice branches, uh, you can use whatever brush you like. So I'm just taking my large flat brush right now. I'm grabbing some black paint. And I'm just kind of doing like a, the top of a tree. I'm not doing a whole tree from top to bottom. It's just kind of coming into the moon. So I'm going to start maybe around here, maybe about halfway to three quarters, a third, something like that. I'm using the thin edge of the brush. Whoopsie. <laughs> and I guess I'll stamp it like that. Uh, no, I'm going to go like this and I'm using the thin edge and I'm going to drag it wherever I want. I like to drag it on top of the moon. Ooh, to make some spooky branches. So I'm just kind of angling up and kind of angling to the right and up. Doing a nice big one to start so you can start a little thicker. I'm going to overlap again to make it a little bit thicker. There we go. And then we can start to get thinner by adding lots of branches on top. So I'm just going to start to split this into a few different, uh, different sides here. I'm going to follow along and maybe split up to the left a bit. Let's do another split down here. Maybe just going across the bottom. Splitting like that. Just adding a few little branches with the big brush. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush in a minute. But just trying to kind of lay out the tree. Here's another one coming down. And as I'm doing this, everybody, I'm releasing pressure as I go. So that way I get a thinner and thinner branch. You want to start a little wider and then get thinner as you go. So I'm going to go up here and doing the same thing. A couple just coming up like this. Maybe cutting across. Ooh, spooky. Maybe another thin one down here. So you can add them, yeah, anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be on top of the moon. You'll just see them a little better on top of the moon. So just a couple, just anywhere coming out from the right or from the left, excuse me. Imagine the tree is here and all the branches are just coming in. Can't give me things without getting things in return. Oh, Sorel, it's too kind. That wasn't my intention, though. I'm eating good, uh, not good uh, for you food. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to share what it is. That's okay. <laughs> I support it. <laughs> Our favorite kind. Exactly. <laughs> me too. Lumpy, welcome in. How's it going? I roamed in Quebec all the time. Oh, did you? Crisp autumn day. Oh, that sounds lovely. I wish. Everyone, I'm going to switch to a small brush and just to add a few more branches, a few more twigs to make it extra spooky. So just using the small brush, working off of the branches you already have just at any angle, just making small little shaky lines. So if you're having trouble making sh uh, straight lines, you're going to excel at this. We want these to be kind of shaky, a little more angled. 
kind of moving back and forth just to make them a little more spooky. Ooh, there they come. You can split them in two if you want, make them longer, make them shorter. Just anything to start filling up the space to really get it spooky looking. But yeah, Lumpy, that sounds great. That sounds like a nice little Sunday. Welcome in. So I'm doing a tutorial in case you didn't know. I'm doing a step-by-step -step painting, so I'm kind of half looking at regular chat here. Doing what I can, but mostly focusing on the tutorial right now. We got some, yeah, we got a lot of people here who are just uh, watching along, so you're welcome to chat with them and with me. See that? It just looks spookier. The more branches I find, the spookier it looks. So keep adding if you want. Add as many or as few as you need. I won't do as many down here because we can't see them as much, but still a couple. There we go. Maybe I'll make some a little longer. Ooh. And you don't need to worry about the ghost. The ghost can go right on top of these, by the way. So if you're worried about the ghosts overlapping the tree, I wouldn't worry. They can overlap once the black is dry. Maybe I'll add a couple more, but not too many. I think it's looking pretty good the way it is. I don't like to overwhelm it. I kind of just like it having it a little more open. Excuse me, enough that uh, we're filling up the space but it doesn't look too filled up. Just a nice in-between. That's probably good. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. You guys can take another few minutes if you like to keep doing the tree. And then I'm gonna move you back over here, I think. Let me think for a second. Yeah, we're gonna move back to the house. We can clean it up a bit. Two and a half hours from my home. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a few uh, either in Quebec, close to Quebec, so yeah, lumpy. Do you separate your tutorials by level of difficulty? Uh, no, I don't, Lumpy. My goal is to kind of make each tutorial attainable in about a two hour period. I know some people like to take a little more time, which is totally fine, uh, but more so my goal is to complete it in about two hours. I think we might go a little over actually today. We'll see. Um, and yeah, I mean, some of them have different techniques that might be a little more difficult, but I don't really rank them based on difficulty, because I, I find that people find just everything, you know, differently. Uh, some might find something super difficult, some might not at all. So I just leave it up to everybody to choose what uh, what design they like. And I just always say that I can lead you through it. All of them are uh, definitely attainable in a two to two and a half hour period. Oh, there you go. It's always nice when you find a few more people a little more local. Lots from Ontario here, but everywhere, everywhere. If anyone else wants to share where they're from, feel free. It's fun to know where we're all tuning in from. Different time zones, different countries, everywhere. We'll give another minute or so. Sorrell's Texas. I kind of remember that. I think you and Todd were talking about Texas. And a few others too. Lots who don't live in Texas, but used to, it sounds like. Pleb, Joe, same thing. Arizona, yes. And it's just comforting to know that we're all so far apart, but all still so together. It's really nice right now to know that. That we can all be hanging out while quite literally very, very distanced. <laughs> Not even just locally, everywhere. Two Shanes, hi! Dropping in real quick to say hi, like you're afraid. Oh, thank you, Two Shanes, thanks. This used to be my go-to look in like, what, grade 11, grade 12? I was growing up my bangs and it was like, braid them up, just like get them out of my forehead. So I brought it back. This was like quite the look. <laughs> it was my life for like a year, <laughs> but thank you. Oh, you got plans today, I assume, too, Shanes? You're up to something? Vibing to the chill song makes paint dry faster. I agree. Kentucky for C. Middleton? Love, Arizona? Okay, I assume that was enough time for the tree. If you're still adding branches, keep going and make it as spooky as you want. 
I'm gonna go back to our house now and kind of clean it up. I find this step is what's re what really cleans it up, brightens it up so we can really see all the distinct features. So we're gonna go on with this now kind of light blue. It's still not like a light bright blue. It is still kind of on the navy, not navy, but it's, it's like a dirty blue, you know? Uh, and I say that because I don't mix just blue and white for this one. I mix blue, white, and a little bit of black. So in theory, if you still have the old blue we were using when we were like outlining everything and doing the shingles and stuff, you can just add more white to that and you'll obtain, obtain this blue. Um, if you'd like to mix a new pile, you can use blue, you can use white and a little bit of black. Again, it kind of makes it like a gray blue almost. That's kind of what I'm going for. It's not like a pretty bright sky blue. It's still a little bit dim while still having the nice, uh, you know, highlight on here. So I'm going to use the medium round brush. Second coat of yellow helped. Excellent. So uh, Sharon, I'll be doing some things around the windows. So maybe do those first with me and then I'll go on top of the windows. You might want to wait just for a couple extra minutes for those. So again, medium round brush. I am just going to use white and mix it into my previous navy blue. So again, the previous blue, which we were using for shingles, for outlining, the mouth, things like that. It'll just be a light version of that nice color. Let's see, that's about it. Yeah, I, I describe it as like a light gray blue. I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, oh, let's see here. North Carolina, yes, go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. Hey, it's so relevant. <laughs> Fall, winter and spring here. Yeah, and spring are. Right across from Quebec. Oh, cool. Walk grocery shop. Gotcha. More apartments than that. Right. Thank you, Two Shades. I think it's really cute, too. Yeah, she had a quick little move. All right, medium round brush. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do the first parts of just highlighting. So we want to look for spots that are going to be highlighted by the moon, which is way up here. So kind of like the left hand spots, maybe top spots over here, maybe underneath here, because that's kind of close to the moon. So you're figuring out where the light is going to hit. So using this new color, this nice light gray blue, I'm just going to go along this side, for example, just do a nice clean, you know, curvy line. I'll do the underside here. I'm just trying to do these all kind of like one solid stroke to keep it nice and clean. And if anything is messy, again, just go over top with black, try it again. Doing that left hand side. I'm gonna leave the right hand side just to kind of open with the medium blue there. I'm gonna do this rooftop down here. I'm gonna do the top part. Little edge there. Oh yeah, this one cuts across. Doing the left hand of the tower. See how it just pops out. All of these little things pop out while still keeping the nice dark spookiness of the painting. Ta-da! Left and bottom, and then the left hand side of this. There we go. Ooh, nice highlights. There we are. Very glowy. Nice, nice, nice. New unit, same building. Mm hmm. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Yeah, now it's like, it's almost like a revamp too, too, Shane's. You can like really start fresh and like you said, like a different gaming room and stuff like that. You can just really figure out what, uh, what works for you guys now. So glowy. Yeah. It's my favorite part is adding all the nice highlights on top. Always with every painting. It's just like, bam. Emerald Lagasse. Bam. Okay, so once you have those highlights on, we can start to, you can do the mouth actually, let's do that before the windows, give them an extra minute or two. So as I said before, we did the work of kind of mapping out our stuff. Now you're confident in your shapes, hopefully. And if not, you can do them again or use black to cover. But I'm now using the same color. 
I'm just overlapping what we've already done. We've already done the nice little lip area, kind of curving up, curving down. It's like a mustache almost. Ooh, spooky mustache. Curving up, curving down. And then you can do some teeth. So the teeth I'll explain a little bit better now that we're doing them in a lighter color. They're just very elongated triangles, kind of thin. So I'm just using a little bit of pressure on my brush as to not do thick lines. Doing some longer triangles kind of in the middle. And then I make them maybe a little shorter as they get further out. You can see they're nice and tight together. This house has lots of scary teeth. And near the end, if you want to just do straight lines, you can do that just to kind of fill up the space a little bit more. They don't all need to be triangular. My favorite thing when you paint are those spooky trees. Oh, thanks, Mr. Doctor. I put them everywhere. <laughs> Kick it up a notch. Bam! You know it. You know it. It was so entertaining. There's more teeth. Oh, yes, that is him. Yeah, did you? Oh, I'm sorry, Cindy. Did you not know that? He changed his name. Same guy, yes. Thanks for the lurk, Lumpy. All right, and then you can do some bottom teeth too. So even though we don't have a bottom lip, we do some teeth on the bottom because they will kind of show through uh, through the green, which we're going to put down here, all the spooky little parts. So you can now do some right side up triangles. So they're pointing upwards or straight lines, whatever works. I leave maybe a little bit of a gap so these aren't all intersecting, but you can make them pretty close together, kind of filling in the spaces here. Triangles and lines. See that? Now it has the bottom teeth there. It's going, ah, very scary. And even though the teeth aren't connected to anything, again, I'm not worried. We're going to put some green swirls down here and kind of cover it up, kind of spooky it up anyway. I'll give you another minute if you're still working on the teeth. And then I just want to do some highlighting to the windows as well. <laughs> Yes, cool RSVK, exactly. Just like icicles or stalactites and stalagmites, if you want to get fancy, the cave terminology. <laughs> I can't be. Pleb, welcome in. Hello. Still at work. Oh, okay. You're working today. No worries. Just in the middle of a tutorial, you can see the uh, house is coming together with the highlights, and then we have a few other spooky elements to add. Hope everything's well. Pop away. Yes, please. Continue to pop in. Pop, uh, pop pop just pop how many times will we say pop <laughs> okay um if you'd like to switch to a smaller brush actually i will too <laughs> let's switch to a smaller brush i'm using the small detail brush now just for the window so we can be a little more clean with it i'm just using the exact same color and i'm just going to outline and also go on top of the yellow to make some little uh crosses and stuff just to make them a little more window like rather than completely open so same color the light blue i'm now going around my glow you can either go very tight to the glow or leave a little bit of a gap doesn't matter closing off the bottom and i like to do a nice little crisscross in between each one so i'm doing a straight up and down line and then a horizontal line there we go. Nice and glowy because the light is hitting all of that, right? So it's going to all be nice and light blue. You can now clean up your squares. Nice angled line for that nice scary eyebrow. Woo! Grr, grr. So again, Sharon and anyone else, if your windows are still a little wet, just give it a couple extra minutes and it should be good. So again, you can see, even if you made a mistake with the medium blue color, the light blue really just hides it. So you don't need to worry too much. Let's do our little lines in between. And then one more up here. Oh, 
<laughs> pop or poop. <laughs> That's funny. There you go. That's all come together nicely. So at this point, um, that's going to be the last step of the haunted house. So if you have anything that you want to re-outline, re-highlight, clean up, you can always do that. Um, if I had time, if I had like, you know, if I wanted to really perfect it, I think I would make a little bit of a lighter line for some of these spots. I think maybe my medium blue was a little bit dark. So for example, like redoing this part, redoing that part, this part, just to see those spots a little bit easier. But that's all up to you. You can do that now, you can do that a little later. I'll give a minute or two either way. And we only have a couple other elements left. We have the nice green kind of uh, mist coming up. I'm going to leave that for last, actually. We're going to do the uh, ghosties next. Yeah, completely dry. Good, good, good. Uh, I viewed a few uh, brush making bids for uh, interesting videos. Oh, okay, brush making videos. Okay. Was it you who posted um, in the Discord about that? Somebody recently posted a video about how to make br uh, brushes and how it's made, I'm pretty sure. I thought it was interesting. I think it was a how it's made video. If it wasn't you, you can check that out. Oh, it was. Okay, yep. <laughs> Do you think you're gonna make some or you just you're, you were just interested in how they're made? Those videos are very satisfying and cool to watch. Bring up the other painting and can compare for the next minute or so. See, just certain elements are maybe a little better highlighted here, here. That's all up to you. Almost there, just a couple other things. You're gonna try again. Oh, again, okay. I didn't realize you did before. That's cool. I've never tried anything like that. Let us know how it goes if you end up doing that. You said, oh, you said you are. I'm gonna try again. Feel free to post about it. I'm sure we'd love to. Didn't know how. Oh, okay, okay. So you're watching a few tutorial videos. Makes sense. That'll help. Okay. All right, everybody, we're gonna do some ghosties now. I love these little ghosts. I think they're so cute. They're just like, in my opinion, the nice in-between between spooky but cute. <laughs> uh, a few of them are a little scarier. I made this guy a little happy like he's playing a little joke. So we're gonna do that and then we can do the green kind of around and on top of the house here. So I'm gonna use the medium size brush for these. And we do a little bit of dry brushing. So for those curious about the nice kind of wispy bits on the bottom, that's going to be dry brushing. And then up here, we just use a lot more white paint to make it a little more opaque and uh, nice resting on top. So medium round brush, I'm washing it off well because we will be using white paint. I use the same paint water the whole time. If you need to use more paint water, or I guess fresh paint water, I should say, just go ahead and change now. But I find as long as you're really drying off the brush, it's all good. Um, I use a literal towel and I just kind of squeeze that dirty water out and then it's all nice and clean. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's all nice and clean. <laughs> sorry for anyone's ears. I just busted with that. Uh, anyway, I'm pouring some white paint, just plain white paint. I want to make sure it's nice and clean for these nice white ghosties. Let's go Ooh, volcano plate. You're running out of room. Let's go here. And of course, it's your painting. Do as many ghosties as you want. I'm sticking with my three. I like to put one kind of here. They're all kind of traveling up the house almost. They're like here, here, and here, just filling up that space. They go on top of the tree as well. So as long as your tree is uh, dry, which mine is here, you should be able to go right on top, no problem. So I'm gonna start with just some uh, white paint on the tip of my brush. We don't want a whole lot because we want the paint to actually kind of run out as we're using it. We just wanna use um, a lot of paint at the start and then we want it to kind of uh, disperse at the end. So I'm just gonna start with a nice curve. So this is like the top of the ghost, kind of a nice curve like that. Like a half circle, maybe a little bit more. You're kind of completing a circle, leaving it a little open. Nice little curve. I'm filling it in. So you can see how nice and bright the paint is on top. That's perfect for the top of the ghost. And then for the bottom, 
what you want to do is kind of wisp it out. So if you still had paint on your brush after applying it, you might want to wipe it off. I actually just wiped it off a little extra on my paper towel, or not my paper towel, my towel. Um, so that there's still a little bit of white on there, but not a lot. There's no blobs of white, it's just kind of coated in white. And then what I do is I kind of drag it down. I'm kind of wisping it down. See how I'm trying to pull? You can either pull the paint from here or just use whatever's on your brush and kind of pull it down. Nice and long. You can either flare it out or keep it a little more tight together. What I kind of do is I flare it out a little bit. You see how I'm flaring it out like this. But then what I do is I kind of collect a few extra strokes and bring them down further as if it's a nice elongated ghost. So it's like you get little wispies coming out, but also further down. I'm gonna grab a little more white, same thing, just kind of wisping down. Just nice and light. You're just lightly pressing and lightly brushing down and kind of flicking at the ends to get it nice and wispy. There he comes. Just keep adding little bits at a time until you have the look that you want. So I'm going for again a bright top and a wispy bottom. I think that's a good shape. I'm going to keep her there. Notice the clean paint water seems to matter most for watercolor. Right, even with gouache you can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always just used the same paint water. It's only... Yeah, there's only very specific situations where I want really, really vibrant light colors. And I'm just sick and tired of drying off my brush a bunch. I'm like, okay, I'll change the water. But especially for tutorials, I just uh, I just use the same stuff and just keep using the towel, as you said. But you're right, watercolor definitely affects it. Okay, I'll do another one up here. Alexi, welcome in. Burger, how's it going? Practicing your shots again. I'm going to make this ghost a little more tilted, so he's going to tilt kind of up like this, just kind of hugging the roof a little bit. Same idea, lots of white at the start, do a nice curve for the head, fill it in. And then wisping down with less paint, so I again tapped off my brush a bit and kind of pulling the paint that's already here and wisping it down. I'm going to make this a little more kind of elongated in the middle maybe. Kind of like tighter, like that. I'm gonna lengthen them even more. Come on down, there we go. Just lightly wisping, kind of flicking at the ends to make it nice and wispy. Ooh, <laughs> he's so spooky. Time to head out. No worries, two Shanes, enjoy your grocery shop and walk, I think you said, yeah. Happy spooky painting, see you. Spooky week, it begins now. We got seven days till Halloween. Six days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Six days. Spooky week. Have a good day, two Shanes. Oh, lovely coolers. Thank you, thank you. All right, doing one more ghosty. I'm gonna put him up here. He kind of wiggles, this one kind of, whoops, kind of wiggles a bit. He's gonna start here and wiggle down. So I made a little happy accident there, that's okay. Just gonna stick his head right around here. And he's gonna kind of wiggle down. Whew. Nice and wispy, this guy. There we go. I'm gonna maybe lengthen him a bit more. I want to make this guy a little wider. It's just little bits at a time. That's the key. Just doing little bits, having a look at how he is. Pull your painting back a bit so you can really see it from a distance. See how they're looking in proportion to everything and then adding if you need more. There they are. We'll add their faces a little bit later. We just want the white to dry a little bit to make it a little easier. So we can add the mist around and then over top and then we're going back to the faces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love dry brushing, Cindy. For clouds, it's good too for movement too. I love to dry brush kind of the outsides a bit to whisk them out. It makes it look like they're kind of flowing and exactly with the ghost, they're going woo, rising up. Okay, yeah, we will be going a few minutes after five just as a heads up. Obviously we have the green to do and then just the little faces. It won't be too long though. Those are the last two steps. 
Just gonna give a quick minute. Quick minute in case anybody needs time for the ghosties. I love the green mist too. That was, uh, that's what really I think brightened up the painting too was the big green lime green mist. Ooh -hoo -hoo. We're gonna do more dry brushing for that, more movement as Cindy said. I'll just kind of like anchor the bottom as well. Anchor that bottom part there. This guy looks a little happier almost. <laughs> he has more of a curved mustache. This guy's a little more... Err. But again, I love showing the two because it really shows you. Even though I'm doing the same ones, <laughs> I'm doing the same ones here. I did this one, I'm doing this one. Excuse me, opposite. Did this one, doing this one. They're always going to be a bit different is my point. So if yours is looking a bit different, that's okay. Happens to everybody. As long as you like it, that's the point. Okay, so for this green mist, whatever you want it to be, it's just spooky mist coming up in the haunted house. Um, I'll be using once again the medium round brush. And I'll be mixing three colors again. I'll be mixing yellow. I'll be mixing phthalo blue just a little bit because I want it a very light lime green. And then once again, I am adding white into it. The white's really going to help it stick on top. Let me see. Where's my colors? Let's do yellow here. So again, lots of yellow, little bit of blue. So a little bit of phthalo blue inside the yellow. And you can add white to it. Again, the white is really going to help it stick on top of any of the darker colors that we have currently on the canvas. Da -da 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 -da. Similar to the mustache from yesterday. Yeah, I guess so. Oh man, that was a time. Love the spooky mist. Ah, oh, thank you, Lynn. Yeah, I really loved the lime green. We don't usually use like a lime green like that in the painting. So having that was really neat. Christy, welcome and hello. How's your day been going? Okay, let me show you how to do some little kind of uh, round cloudy mists. Let's start over here, just on top of the house, then we'll work our way up. So what I do is I start with uh, paint on the brush, of course. I want to grab some of my lime green. So again, yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. And I start just by doing some nice curved, curved kind of like bubbles. It's almost like the tops of our ghosts. They're just curved round objects, kind of like a very fluffy cloud. I'm putting them all kind of next to one another. Some go higher, some go lower. And again, lots of paint for this step, just kind of doing some nice, very thick strokes. See how thick they look. We're kind of shaping out this mist. So I'm going on top of my teeth a little bit, so they kind of just peek out from the tops here. You can go as far up or as far down as you need. Maybe keep it tighter down sometimes, but just doing these very curvy, curvy round objects. Just bulbs of mist, I guess. Very loose, kind of just all slightly overlapping. See how I kind of connect them all? They kind of overlap. Just all mesh together. Good day so far. That's really good, Christy. Just almost done this tutorial. I'm going to raise them up a little over here, maybe coming up along the side of the house. Maybe one or two getting close to the ghost. So those are all very thick, very prominent, you know? They're just uh, nice bright outlines so far. That's good, Christy. I'm glad to hear it. Very bright. I'll just touch up a couple here as I'm waiting here. I'll just give a minute or two if you're still adding. And I, I just like to do that in this step. I like to do all of them at once and then I'll do the next step all at once. But you can always kind of switch back and forth between the two steps that I'm about to do here. So this was step one. I'll teach you step two in a minute. And again, your painting might have more room on the bottom. You can bring the mist up further. It might have less room. Keep it down further. Whatever you think works. You can bring it up above the haunted house more, like maybe on the sides a bit. Whatever you need. Okay. So once you have these nice bright streaks on here, now what we want to do is add some dry brushing again. So similar to the ghosts, we had the brightness and then it kind of comes down a little more soft, a little more transparent. It's the same thing. We have these bright streaks, then we put transparent streaks to fill them in. 
You can still see lots of purple showing through, so we don't need to fill the whole thing. It's more so just kind of softly bring that top edge down a bit to make it look kind of, again, see-through, a little bit smoky. So at this point, you want your brush to have a little amount of paint on there. So very similar to the Ghosties, you can kind of take it, maybe wipe it a little bit on your towel just so the green is there, but not in large blobs. And then you're just kind of doing more curvy shapes inside of the original curve. So you see how I did that? I just went below the original curve, did a couple extra curves, and we now have a nice transparent center. So you see the shape of these clouds, but then you have the mist kind of inside as well. So just lightly kind of scraping your brush around, keeping with those curves, filling in those middles, and keeping some purple too, and that way you have some darkness showing through as well. And a little bit of paint goes a long way. So if you feel like your brush is running out, just try pressing a little harder on it. You can still get lots of this kind of dry brush look from just a little bit of paint. See how they're all filling up there. I'm gonna keep it here. Whoa, what was that? Oh my goodness, that was just the shadow. I thought that was a spider running around. I'm so nervous about spiders now. <laughs> I thought that was, oh my gosh. Spooky, I'm spooked, I'm spooked. It's Halloween already. And I think a lot of you are here for that one tutorial where I had the spider. <laughs> I think I'm spooked from that forever now. Seeing that spider crawling around. That was definitely just a shadow though. Oof, 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 oof. Scary. All right. So see that again, very transparent. You can see some teeth through there. You might see a little bit of the highlight coming down through there. That's perfect. That's what we want. You can always go back and add more green if you need to reshape anything or if you want it brighter. Maybe you see some empty spots. Maybe I'll throw some here, for example. That's fine. Bring it further up or something. Ooh -hoo -hoo. There we go. That makes it look like it's kind of like disappearing into the background too. <laughs> spooked. I'm spooked, Todd. I'm spooked. Oh, that was red by accident. Whoopsie. Cover that up, go away, go away. Oh no, my mist has some red. Get out of there. All right, that turned a little messy. That's okay though. Oh well, there we go. Cool. <laughs> I painted a spider and it freaked me out. Oh yeah? So I kind of want, I kind of want to put a small spider in my uh, Friday painting, Grandma. I don't know exactly what the painting will be, but I feel like I want to give a little like ode to the spider that was around for a little bit there. So I think I want to incorporate it somehow. <laughs> Would it look okay if I made the, the first loops, the top loops of the mist, uh, not as prominent? Oh yeah, great for sure. In fact, I kind of like to do that here because that makes it look like I think that they're going more in the distance and almost disappearing. The first loops, the top loops. Yes, exactly. Pretty much what I did. Yeah. It's been good, Christy. I've just been doing the tutorial so far. Took a nice relaxing morning and uh, tutorial time now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Ode to Spidey. I think it's necessary. It won't be like a whole spider painting. <laughs> Again, uh, yeah, Grandma just said it. It would freak me out probably. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, and then we're adding the spooky legs. Oh, <laughs> I'd be scared the whole time. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be more like the spider is in the painting. It'll just be a small little spider, just like ours was. He was a small little spider hanging around. For those who didn't know, I ended up uh, finding the spider in my living room and released him to the wild when he crawled up onto my blanket one night. So I hope he's alive and well. I assume he is because I let him outside. Gets lots of food out there. Just included. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> not going to do a whole spider. Oh, too scary. Anyway, that's what happened to him. He's no longer here, but maybe a friend will come again. Who knows? All right, I'm just prepping for the last step. Oh, good. Yeah, we're not too far over. That's fine. Last step is going to be adding some little faces to our ghosties. So easy way to get creative is adding your own kind of faces. I'll teach you how I did these kind of spookier looking ones, kind of the scream look and this cute little guy here. But if you want to do anything different, please go ahead. DBL, thanks for the follow. Just in the middle of a tutorial, I'll be finishing up in a minute or two. 
So I'm of course going to use my teeny tiny brush and I'm using black paint so it shows up nice and dark on top of the white. And my basic technique for kind of the kind of like open mouth kind of scream looking face, kind of the oh it's like spooky but uh, scared face almost, is lots of ovals. Uh, ovals in like bean shapes, kind of like lima bean shapes. Uh, for the eyes, I describe these as more bean shapes and they're both angled. So what I do is I do the bean shape, which is kind of like a uh, wiggly oval almost. It kind of curves in and out. But the key is the angle of these beans. They angle outwards. So you see how they're both kind of angling like this. It's the opposite of the angry face. The angry face angles down and in, down and in. The bean shapes angle up and in up and in so it's like they're uh they're like concerned you know they're like oh wait not this way they're going oh you know they're scared and spooked almost all at once and then i do a nice little long oval for the mouth Wah! i'm gonna make that even longer there he is While uh, listening to this tutorial, I'm finished my foxes. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, nope, Christy, I had a uh, tutorial scheduled on Facebook and in all the other uh, schedules that I have posted on Twitch and Discord for uh, three o'clock today. You can always check those schedules. I always update them weekly. Again, the Facebook schedule isn't posted right now just because I haven't made a tutorial painting, but I will be posting that when I get that done. My second ghosty is the exact same as the first one. The angled bean shapes or angled like wiggly ovals, however you want to think of them. And a nice elongated oval for the mouth. So till still scary, still spooky. One is a fox with the baby looks like a mouse. Oh! <laughs> They were pretty cute. Like a mouse, hmm. Does he have round ears maybe? Mice usually have round ears. Make them pointy for fox. Mm -hmm. No worries, Christy. Okay, and the last one I just wanted to make a little more like happy, a little more cute rather than scary scary. So for this one, the eyes I just did kind of um, like upside down U shapes, kind of curving up and down, up and down. I think it makes it look like he's kind of laughing or squinting really happily. And for the mouth, it's just a half circle, the bottom of a half circle filled in. So it looks like he's kind of smiling away, just goofing off, playing a little joke on everybody. Hee hee hee, and he's running away. Yes, please send a picture. Yes, Lynn. Just to get, yeah, just they're a nice little happy family. They're all a little bit different. Again, if you want to do different faces, you can totally do that. Make him winking or something. Make him just regular happy with a little smile, whatever you want. Okay, and that's the last step. Just adding the little faces to the ghost to give them some personality in life. So as usual, whenever you're done, no rush, but when you're done, make sure you sign your painting. I'm gonna do a very light green just to kind of hide it in the mist because it's scary. And that finishes it off. I'm gonna display both. You can kind of see the differences here. See which one you like better. Just to show yourself again that paintings are always a little different. Ooh, can't really see that, can we? Well, <laughs> you can see the main one, you can see half my other one. <laughs> Let me see if I can move this, hold on. I'll kind of overlap them, okay? Cool. Yay, there we go. Thanks for the nice trail. You're welcome, Lynn. Spooky and adorable. Yeah, I think so. Oh, there's the prime. Thank you, Gray. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. So Gray just posted some information about um, subscribing, supporting me. If you feel like doing that, if you've enjoyed my tutorials, enjoyed watching me, that's all the information right there. Thank you, Gray. That's very nice. Um, as usual, I'll remind you, if you want to post your beautiful painting so we can see what you did today and you can share with everybody else and see everybody else's painting, um, you've got two options. You've got Facebook 
Um, again, I'm still posting event pages to Facebook to let you know when tutorials are and to allow you to share your photos there. So I'm just going right now, opening it up for posting. So if you're ready to go, ready to post right now, you can do that. No rush though, there we go. So again, the Facebook event page, or you can go to Discord. If you're a little more familiar with Discord, you wanna share there, you're welcome to do that. We have a Discord channel as well. Uh, in terms of another tutorial, if you want another tutorial, I haven't made the design yet, but I am planning on doing that for 8 p.m. this Friday. So again, Saturday is Halloween. I figured maybe some people were a little busy during Halloween. I will be streaming on Twitch on Saturday, just not a tutorial. It'll be some, I think, paint pouring on a pumpkin. It's gonna be something a little bit different. I might carve a pumpkin. I think I'm gonna paint or paint pour on one. So if you just want something fun to watch on Saturday, I'll be on on Saturday. Uh, but Friday, I'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial around 8 p.m. EST. I think it'll be another kind of nighttime one and it'll be another Halloween, hopefully like a spooky painting for you. So just keep your eye on uh, any social media you want, Facebook, Discord, Twitch, all of that. I'll post my schedule everywhere as usual. Uh, the design everywhere and then you can plan ahead for that uh and uh, yeah if you want to if you want to watch me more on twitch i won't be on tomorrow i'll be on tuesday next i'm gonna hang out for a little bit here so if you want to hang out with me you can but uh i'll probably get going semi soon i won't be starting any projects or anything just like hanging out answering questions if you have any questions yeah so you can look out for all that and i'll be on twitch a lot before friday too tuesday thursday oh 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 Thursday is a very, very fun stream I have planned. It's a special someone's birthday on Thursday. Not me. It's this guy's birthday. It's Bob Ross's birthday on Thursday. So I have a secret plan for a stream on Thursday having to do with Bob Ross's birthday. So if you want to check that out, I'll be on at 11 a.m. EST until whenever it's done, probably three o'clock or something like that. I don't want to give away what I'm doing, but it's going to be different and fun. <laughs> That's Thursday. And again, I'm on Tuesday. I'm on Friday, Saturday. <laughs> I'm on a lot. Ah, you're welcome, Grandma. You're welcome, Sushi. Sweet, cool. Yeah. No worries, Christy. You're very welcome, Sharon. Hope the windows worked out okay. Thanks, Canine. Amisha and Anisha, you're welcome. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you came. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed. Thank you, Christy. Purple midge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I want oh, I want to spill so bad about Thursday, but I can't. <laughs> I just want to leave it a surprise. A few things planned there. Bob's birthday. And then yeah, Saturday is a Halloween stream. I'll be dressing up. I'll be in costume. I don't know what the costume is yet, but I'm gonna figure it out by Saturday. <laughs> so feel free to come in and watch just for fun. You can dress up too if you want. Enjoy what I'm doing. The uh Pumpkin painting, pumpkin carving, pouring. Yes, you're welcome, Purple Midge, no worries. Zelda treasure sound. Ta da da da! Do 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 That's a good sound bite, I should add that. You got it though, Lumpy. You too, Nancy, thank you. Oh, no worries, Christy, it's no worries at all. Our chappy welcome in looks great, thank you. I just finished the tutorial. I'm gonna hang out for a little bit and then I'll be popping off. But welcome in. How's your day going? And yeah, thanks for coming guys. If you're logging off now, totally get it. And I'm here to answer questions just to make that clear. If um, anyone has questions about any of the steps, need, needs a little extra help, I'm happy to uh, do that right now for you. Otherwise I'm just chilling and chatting for a bit. Seeing how we're all doing. 